So you want to learn how to compress your irons. You want to learn how to strike your irons more consistently. Let me tell you, you aren't far away. In fact, in this video, I'm going to share with you things that are working with my students right now. And they're simple changes that you can make to start to consistently, first of all, strike your irons, okay? Then once we've got you striking it, I'll then show you how you start to amplify that distance. That's exactly what we're going to cover in this week's video. Now, before I do that, if you're new to the channel, one of your first lessons of mine, please consider subscribing. I release videos just like this one every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, you'll never have to remember a thing. I always put a free downloadable practice guide in the description box below. So here's the great thing. There's not a lot you can be doing wrong that's causing your poor contact, okay? So you'll, by the time we finish, you're gonna be absolutely fine. So here's look, here's the golf swing. Here's the arc, there's the club coming down. It gets to a lowest point and then comes up again, right? Now, if you're striking it poorly, what's happening is, is that low point in this circle, look, is just happening just behind the golf ball. If it's too far behind, you'll start to top it and thin it, okay? If it's just behind, you'll start to fat it. But if we can start to shift that low point after the golf ball so what happens is you strike the ball and then the, then the ground you will start to make solid contact so how do you go about achieving that well come and have a look at this the first thing you've got to do is bake in a solid strike in the setup so here's the simplest thing the very first thing that you should do if you want to improve your contact bake it into your setup so we've said look the golf swing is a circle, yeah? And with every circle, there's a lowest point to that circle, and we've just said that needs to happen after the golf ball. So how do you make sure that you make or strike the ball first, then the ground? Well, what can you do? Well, if you put your feet together and take, well, I've got an A-time in my hands here, I'm gonna take even steps. So A-time, middle, middle clubs, middle stance. Now, the second thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move my handle now opposite my inside lead leg here, and then I'm gonna grip the club. What's that done? Well, it's produced an angle offset look from the maximum radius of the swing. So this is where the low point of the swing is, and what I've done is just gone boom. So now I've baked into my setup a ball turf contact straight away from ball position and hand position, right? The second thing I'd love you to do is make sure that you have a more weight favoring your lead foot. Why? Because great ball strikers at the moment of impact have more weight on their front foot than they do when they're from pole ball strikers. But pole ball strikers have a lot more weight on their back foot at the moment of impact. So just favoring that lead side gives you a bit of a head start. And finally at setup, make sure you have the middle part of your hips and your shoulders right on top of the ball like this at the start, on top of each other. Why? Because if this is your center of your circle and they're on top of each other, again, look, it's helping you control this circle and strike the ball, then the ground. If I was to kind of have this misaligned, so my middle of my shoulders are over here too much, I'm now going to start to potentially start striking the ground behind the golf ball, and that's going to lead to your thin shots. So bake, simply bake all of this, a great strike, into setup, and you're going to be well on your way to improving your strike. So let's now hit a shot in this setup position before we work on maybe some issues with the swing. So I actually scratched a line level with a golf ball and you can do this as well on the golf course because it's gonna help you identify exactly where your club is striking the ground relative to the golf ball. It also gives you something to practice. Often when I'm hitting, uh, doing my practice swings, I'm almost making sure I look, I maybe see a line there and imagine I'm striking look after that line. So it gives you kind of a reference point and something that you can do in swings. Super, super simple. So I'll get myself set over the ball. And let's have a look, that's a great strike. Have a look at this look. So my clubs come in. Where's the lowest point of my divot look? After the golf ball here. That is what we're trying to achieve. A little bit, possibly a fraction steep for my, for my liking. But again, the wonderful feedback when I look at that line. Right, let's now move on to step number two. So here's something super simple, and this will help you maintain the circle. So a lot of people who do not strike the ball very, very well, their circle is always changing. And it changes because they pull their arms in, they lift their arms up, they're all over, basically their arms are all over the place. So how do you create some consistency in the circle? Because if you imagine, if we can create consistency in the circle, then more likelihood is we're gonna end up with a consistent 
low point and strike the golf ball. So here's something that I give my students all the time. Just imagine you get yourself set and just imagine you're trying to keep your arms fairly close together, okay? Not tight, not stiff or anything, but fairly close together on the way back. And as you come through, look, we keep them fairly close together on the way through. Now, at some stage in the swing, of course, your trail elbow is gonna bend a little bit here. And on the way through, look, they're straight here, but they're gonna bend eventually. So this is kind of almost a feeling from about half swing to half swing. Just imagine and keeping them closer together. And what it does is it kind of looks after look the circle because suddenly now I'm not doing this. I'm not pulling the circle in. Just keeping them fairly close together maintains that circle all the way back and all the way through. So I like to work my students here on almost what they feel is very short half swings. So we're not spreading them apart. We're just keeping them fairly close together. And it looks something like this. So we practice just about here to here and to here, look, okay? It really helps them also to force their shoulders to turn beautifully on a circle because a lot of times when you're playing, you start cheating, you start lifting your hands up, and again, it becomes a whole very handsy and armsy swing versus, look, when you're forced to kind of keep your, um, your arms a bit closer together, you're now forced to use my shoulders and move them on a circle back and them on a circle on the way through. Again, it really, really helps with your consistency. So very simple visual, that's not complicated whatsoever. Just imagine your arms staying nice and close back, nice and close through, and hey presto, another beautiful strike. Look where I finished, look, half swing, arms nice and close together. And what do we see here, look? Come and have a look at this. There's the line. I've actually took that one better. Much shallower diver, by the way, here. But low point is after the golf ball. And hey presto, that is a wonderful way for you to really improve the quality of your contact. Okay, now, however, however, I have given that drill to a number of people and it makes their swings look so much better, but there is an issue with it, okay? In fact, there's an issue with any form of tip and that is tension. You see, when I say to somebody, just get your arms a bit closer, they start to do this and they become this kind of wooden statue. So here's something that I give my students to kind of, with any tip that you try, to reduce some of the tension in your arms and shoulders to really help your ball striking, but also hugely your distance. So I'm gonna grab Leo in, who's on the camera right now, to help me out with this one. So Leo, all I want you to do is grab the end of this club. Okay. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now is this. Try and just, uh, just move me around. Can you move my arms around? No chance. No chance, okay, why? because I'm so tense here. I gave this to a research student and the distance he hit after this little, just this one session was 40 yards with his irons. Now, watch this. What's it like now? Yeah, way loose, sir. Can you, pull it, can you pull it out of my hands? No. No. So what does that mean? You've got a firm grip. I've got a firm grip still. I'm holding it firmly, but look, my arms, my shoulders yeah. are free. Easy to move. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Cool. You get on the camera again. <laughs> I need you. Okay, right. So. What we then do, so, so you've got that sense say, get a friend to do this with you. Because all of these things here, these keeping these arms straight, yes, they want to be straight and connected here like this, a bit close together. I still want them look flowing. So I want those shoulders. So when you're making this motion, don't make it stiff. Allow the club to flow as you're doing this. And you know, I've used, you can use many images. I've used an image of almost like Olympic hammer thrower, throwing the hammer out into the distance here. There's many different things you can do to try to make this as relaxed and as flowing as possible, but that one is a beauty. So, I baked into setup. I'm ready, I'm flowing, I'm gonna keep those arms fairly close together on the way back, all the way through, and I'm really visualizing this circle moving ahead of that golf ball. I've drawn my line in here. I might have a practice swing where I hit. There we go, I'll hit in the head of the line. This is a great thing you can do on a golf course, but now, I'm nice and relaxed too, and hopefully we get beautiful, beautiful contact. <laughs> and that one was a little bit actually heavy. So what did I do there? Well, do you know what? Kind of look at this. See, I, I struck, for most people that's a pretty good strike. I just struck that a little bit heavy. Now, <laughs> why did I do that? Basically, I literally, when I came down, I literally didn't 
commit to this shot. A little bit tense on the way through. So watch the difference here. I'm just gonna relax a little bit more on this next one. Okay, bake it into setup and then look. There we go. Much, much more free. I'm talking to camera. I was a little bit tense. And hey presto, look now. I'm good. So tension happens to the best of us. So I hope you enjoy this video. Do me a favor. If you love this video and you want to see me actually giving this to an actual person, it's not released yet, but I'm going to put it right here. But this one here, once you've got the solidness of strike, now you want some more accuracy, go and check this one out. If you're new to the channel, give it a thumbs up. Maybe share it with one of your friends. And of course, look, there's a free download practice guide in the description box below. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.